today's reflection and then as we are looking in the month of April and looking through into the Calvary walk this month of May we are looking into walking in God's victory and that is the message we want to look into today and listen to God speaking to you and speaking to me through the scriptures the gospel of John as you look the life of a man who was born blind lived blind but one time as he walked with God, in walking with God's victory, he encountered God's light and he was no longer blind. And we want to look into walking in God's victory this day. And to guide us in that, we are going to be reading from the book of John, uh, chapter 9 and verses 5. But we'll be reflecting on John chapter 9, verses 1, all the way to 11. But I just want to read one verse uh, to us this day even as we reflect on walking in God's victory. And there are six areas that we want to look into this day about walking in God's victory. Let us pray. Eternal loving God, we glorify your name and thank you for you are Jehovah and your God with us. This day, Lord God, you have gathered here wherever we are to listen to you, speaking to us, assuring us that when we walk with you, Lord, we will indeed walk into your victory. Minister to us by your word, Lord, this day. Using me in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The word of God from the book of Gospel of John, chapter 9, and verses 5. And we can begin from verse 1. The Bible says, As Jesus passed by, he saw a man blind from birth. And his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his disciples, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, It was not that this man sinned or his parents but that the works of God might be displayed in him. Verse 4, we must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, verse 5, I am the light of the world. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. The word of the Lord for the people of God. Praise be to God. Here we encounter the story. And the story we are encountering in the Gospel of John is the story of a man who was born blind. And this man who was born blind lived blind all his years until along the way he encounters Jesus and Jesus sees the blind man. And then the disciples, as Jesus was seeing the blind man, the disciples are asking Jesus, Master, who sinned that this man was born blind? And then Jesus says, no one sinned. But this happened for the glory of God. And says, you got to do the work of him sent me, that now it's day, for night is coming. My beloved in the Lord, this man, Jesus took some mud, applied the mud on his eyes, then asked him to go all the way to Siloam and go and wash his face. He obeyed, he went, and he came back seeing. People looking at him, who had seen him blind and begging all the days of his life because he was a beggar, were left wondering, is this the same man or is it a different person? The Bible says, some said it was him, others said it was not. But he himself said, I am that man who was beggar and blind. Then they asked him, then, how are your eyes opened? The Bible in verse 11 says, The man said, The man called Jesus did it for me. What do we learn from all this 
scriptures this day. And what do we learn from this story of the blind man? And the lesson that Jesus is bringing to us in walking in God's victory. First lesson we realize that Jesus sees. Jesus saw a blind man. He is one who saw. All the other people asking Jesus questions. Who sinned that this man was born blind? People asking, why is it his parents who sinned? Is it him who sinned? They are not the one who had seen the blind man. It is Jesus who had seen the blind man. So I say one thing. First thing, when you walk in God's victory, in your trouble, in your tribulations, Jesus sees. The rest of the people, when they see, they can't make a difference. Jesus sees the trouble of this man. And instead of them waiting to hear what Jesus is saying and how he's going to solve this problem, they start asking questions. What makes the difference in your life, in my life, is not just men and women seeing my trouble. It is inviting Jesus into that challenge you are going through. When Jesus sees your issues, that makes a difference. Jesus saw the blind man. It is not the rest of the people who had seen and I will tell you this day, in whatever situation you are going through, make it known unto Jesus. That makes the difference. Jesus sees. He does see our issues. The second thing we realize that is that Jesus is compassionate. Every other person there condemned the blind man. They are seeing a beggar, a dirty beggar, who is blind. He's dirty, he's blind, he's a beggar. And instead of them being compassionate, the first thing these people are asking is that, who sinned that this man was born blind? Is it him or his parents? At that moment you wonder, what difference would it make? Even if they know who sinned, either it's him or his parents that sinned, what difference would it make? The fact remains, the fella is blind, was already born, he's blind, he's here. After all, the Bible says, Jesus saw a man born blind. So even if it was, it's him who sinned, when did he sin and he was born blind? Everybody else was condemning him, looking for reasons as to who sinned. But Jesus was compassionate unto the man. Praise be to God. And that's why this day, I want to tell you, when you walk in God's victory, you encounter Jesus' compassion for jesus is compassionate when no one else can give you a pat on the back can tell you paul eh? we have a jesus who is so compassionate he understands everything we go through that lesson that we get from this scripture this day is that it is important to follow god's formula and this formula was not easy the bible says <laughs> but jesus saw the blind man he spit on the ground. You can imagine someone spitting on the ground. And then the Bible says he did not only spit on the ground. This man, when his Jesus spit on the ground, he made mud. He made mud on the ground. And he made mud with his own saliva. Imagine that. Making mud with your saliva. How is that? He has like made mud with his own saliva. That did not look like it is very reasonable thing to do. Making mud with your own saliva. That's what Jesus did. That everyone would have wondered. What is Jesus up to with this mud that he's making? Mud with the saliva? Jesus, the teacher we have followed? And I would imagine Peter was around there and was wondering, seriously, Jesus, what are you doing with this mud you're making here? And I'm sure Matthew, the tax collector, was there wondering also, what is Jesus doing with this mud you're making here? But Jesus made mud. And after he finished making mud, the Bible says, he took the mud, and then he applied that mud into the man's eyes. Applied the mud in the man's eyes. After applying the mud in the man's eyes, then Jesus told him, go all the way to Sloam. 
and then go and wash your face. Imagine this man going to Siloam to wash his face all the way. There are people encountering him on the way. He is blind. Now he has mud on his eyes. And probably as Jesus applied the mud on the eyes, some of the mud were dripping down his clothes, his robes. Then Jesus finishes and says, Now go to Siloam and wash. Now the man obeys. And along the way, I would imagine people are ridiculing him. But he still decided, Jesus has said. I would imagine along the way people were asking, Man, we left you blind. How comes you have all this mud on your face? And I would imagine he was saying, The man called Jesus has said, I do it. I won't tell you, church. Follow the formula of our Lord Jesus Christ. Don't do what everybody else is doing. Don't do what everybody else is telling you to do. As a young man, you don't have to do the course everyone else is doing. No. You know, as a farmer, you don't have to farm everyone else, everything everyone else is farming. No. Ask God what you should do. As a businessman, you don't just have to go and do every other business the other person is doing. No. Think out of the box. This man, mad on the eyes, walking to slow up, I would imagine that even the brothers, if they were there, or someone else would say, No, Jesus, why make my brother have mud on the eyes, go all the way to Siloam to wash, yet when you healed the centurion, you said, you said the word, and he was healed wherever he was, in the Gospel of Mark. Why do this to this man? Jesus' formula of healing, solving your issues, it doesn't have to be the same formula he used to come through in my situation. Jesus comes to each one of us in his old formula. The man went all the way to Siloam, and I would imagine he got to the pool. And looking at the pool of Siloam and going down to the pool, he's looking at the pool in Siloam, and he needs now to wash his face in this Siloam pool. And I would imagine now him starting to get the water. Remember, he's blind. He has mad. And he cannot be able to see, but he could touch and feel the water. Immediately he washed his face in the pool of Siloam, which was seven miles away. He washed his face. The Bible says, immediately he saw, and he came back seeing. Praise be to God. That is Jesus' formula. The formula that the Lord Jesus uses on you doesn't have to be the same formula he will use on me. The fourth lesson that we learn from this scripture we realize that he obeyed and went all the way to Swam, which was seven miles. He would have complained. Why put mud on my blind eyes already? He obeyed. After Jesus did that, it was told him, walk all the way to Swam. He did not question Jesus on his formula. He did not question Jesus on the distance to Swam. No, he obeyed Jesus. In the same way as we walk in God's victory, God is calling upon you and me to be obedient to his word. God wants you to be obedient to his word. Believe what the scriptures say. Believe what the Lord says in his word. The word of the Lord is powerful. This is our compass in life. This is our guide, the word of the Lord. It is good to follow the scriptures. What is the Lord saying in your life? What is the Lord saying in my life? He obeyed the word of God. By obeying the word of God, he came back from Swan. Seen. The fifth lesson that we learn from here is that he became a testimony to many. Became such a testimony. The Bible says, as he came back from Swan, some people are saying, Isn't this the same beggar who was sitting here begging? Is it him? Some said, It is him. Others say, it is not him. You know what I tell you this day? When the Lord transforms your life, you know the same again. What you want to wear changes. What you, you, you the house you used to live in changes. The language you used to speak changes. When you have encountered Jesus, your life becomes a living testimony. That's what it happens. Living testimony. We do not even need to ask. We can tell. From the way you are talking, the way you are walking around, 
the way even you are like interacting with the people, you know, your life speaks of one who has encountered the Lord Jesus Christ. When you walk with God, God transforms your entire life and you become a testimony. This man did not even have to say, I am the same beggar. It is them who are saying he is trans. He did not have to say, I am cleaner. I am changed. The Bible says, some were saying, is it him? Others are like, no, it's not him. Why? His life was transformed. When you walk in God's victory, your life changes. Your life gets transformed. Even the people you grew up with in your village, they look at you today, they wonder, what? What happened? The people you grew up in the city, where you grew up, or in that small area of slum or big estate you grew up in, when God gets into your life, when you encounter Jesus, you walk with him, when he transforms your entire life, they start becoming a testimony of what the Lord has done in your life. These people are talking to one another, they're saying, ah, is it him? Others are saying, no. Is it him? No. Others are saying, yes. It is not him testifying about the transformation in his life. It is other people testifying of that transformation. I want to tell you, my beloved in the Lord, the moment you encounter Jesus and you walk with him, he transforms your life and you'll never be the changer. same again. In the situation you are going through right now, release yourself to Jesus. He'll transform you and you become a testament to many. Finally, what we learn from this lesson, finally in the verse 11, the man says, they asked him what happened. He said, Jesus did it. How do are your eyes opened? He said, Jesus did it. How are your life, was your life transformed? Jesus did it. How comes nowadays you are like this? Jesus did it. How comes nowadays the anger you used to have is gone? Jesus did it. How comes nowadays you are not vengeful like you used to be? Jesus did it. How comes that nowadays you are full of hope? Jesus did it. How comes that the person who was full of negative energy, now you are full of positive energy? Jesus did it. He did it for the blind man. Jesus can do it for you. He was asked, how was your life transformed? How, did your, how were your eyes opened? And he says, Jesus did it. What do I want to tell you this day? In whatever you are in, Jesus can do it for you. Whatever your area you want transformed, that change you have been desiring, that transformation you have been desiring, walk with Jesus and he will transform you. He did it for the blind man. He can do it for you. Let us pray together. Loving Jehovah, loving God, we praise you, we glorify your name. You did it for the blind man. You did it for him. It was looking undoable. As the man was applied on his face, as he walked about seven miles all the way to Sloan, you did it for him. You can do it for my viewer, Lord. You can do it for me. In whatever areas of our life we are struggling in, oh God, do it for us, Lord. Do it because you are our God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling, be glory, honor, and majesty. May the mighty love God lift up his countenance upon you and be gracious to you. And may the peace of God, the surpassing human understanding, keep your heart and your minds in the love of God and Son, Jesus Christ. And may the blessings of God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit with you now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. And thank you very much for being with us in this service. The Lord be with you, watch you, and lift up his countenance upon you. This is your pastor and friend, Edward Karanja, coming to you from Kasarani with a lot of love from the Lord to you. Thank you.